This is all about developing your sales pitch and presentations. This one is kind of a special session for me because of some of the stuff I'm going to bring in. And I actually invited uh, my old, I don't know if he jumped in or not, him and his wife, my old CEO or uh, Steve Bryant, who taught me a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you in this because they are core and fundamentally like, I don't care how long, 20 years, another 20 years from now, it's going to be the same thing, right? What I'm going to show you is stuff I learned back in 2000. So 21 years ago, I was given this book, okay? I was given this book and I, more importantly, was taught how to use this book and then given the opportunity to expand on this book. And it's really what honed my craft and my expertise for sales pitches and more importantly, presentations, especially around building value. Now, um, I, 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 this is going to be a fun one because, you know, I want you to go back and reference the, um, the communicating for a change session we did last show. We did, the, I think the one before that, the open, the cold calling and opening doors and even in the edge conversation earlier today, we talked all about some of the different sessions and, you know, using our product suite on how to build that into your pitches and edge and how to open up conversations properly, building on value and not on price. But just like the cover of this presentation book says, expect to win. Before I get into the meat and before I get into the words, the first thing you have to understand is it starts with a mentality, right? Now, Steve Bryant was a former Marine and he ingrained this in our heads. I never had the uh, uh, opportunity to serve, the privilege, my family, my grandparents, my dad, all that stuff did tremendous respect. But that's something that I can claim for myself. But to have a former CEO who is also a Marine, he brought that in uh, to a lot of it, made a lot of sense. And so we started first with that mental expectation of expect to win. When you sit down at the table, and I've talked about this before, with confidence, you are expecting to win that business. If you don't expect to win that business, you have no place even taking a seat at that table. You are wasting that opportunity's time. You're wasting your own time. And I talk about us having three things, right? We have time, energy, and money. Don't waste them. First, start with the mentality of expect to win. Before I get into the presentation, I want to talk about proper sales pitches first. And when I talk about the sales pitch, the elevator pitch, you have to understand that the elevator pitch came from the idea of in Hollywood, let's say back in the day, and you have a screenplay or a, or a movie and you jump on an elevator. And next thing you know, you look over and there's a producer there next to you. That's the idea. You have the ride of that elevator to pitch them to want to hear more. That's what your opening uh, uh, like sales pitch is. Now, I've thrown out the challenge in multiple trainings to do not use save money right? Credit card processing or merchant services in your opening pitch, because all you're doing is you're setting yourself up for a price conversation. You're not distancing yourself from every other person that uses that. So I want to start first. You need to understand, you need to treat your opening pitch like a work of art. Okay. Take the time to play with it, work it, revise it, just like you would a bio or if you were doing a painting, right? You need to make sure this thing is a work of art. This is what gets you the opportunity to even do a presentation. If you don't have a solid opening statement, a sales pitch, you can't sell the presentation and then you can't sell the product or the service that you want to uh, that you want to sell. Now this training can be applied for more than just merchant services, obviously, right? I'm taking the stuff I learned selling uniforms and linen service and everything else and it's the same core principles. In fact, when I show you the opening page, it's the exact same six key features. I'm just going to change it to this industry. And it works. I've used it for years, right? Second point is your ability to deliver it can be the biggest determining factor of your success. And when I go to show you a couple things, delivery matters. What, how you say is just as important as what you say. That's where that mentality comes in first, the expect to win. When you sit down with confidence and communicate clearly and build a bridge with your person, right? With your potential client, your audience, you can kind of fumble on the what because you have locked down the how. Third thing, the key to moving to a value conversation as opposed to a price conversation. You want to make sure that your pitch sets you up 
to explain and sell on value. If I use those keywords that take somebody's mind to price and saving money and being cheaper than what I'm paying now, it is an incredibly difficult hole to dig out of. Set the stage for that. Uh, the quality of video isn't that great, but I got a. This is one of my favorite. How many of you guys have seen Boiler Room? Right, Boiler Room's a, a, a great movie when it comes to sales. Has tons of great one-liners, and in this clip, you know, the one of the main characters goes from being very not a confident. Right, he did not have the expect to win mindset uh, when he first started. And he got trained and he got tenacious. He kind of, he dug deep with some of his natural stuff he did. He learned how to take and craft what he could do with talking. And this is a little clip of where uh, the character gets on the phone with somebody else. Hello? Hi, Mr. Davis. This is Ron calling you from the Daily News. How are you doing this morning? It's Davis and I'm not interested. Okay, I'm sorry to bother you. Have a nice day. Wait a minute. Wait, that's your pitch? You consider that a sales call? Well, um... You know, I get a call from you guys every Saturday, and it's always the same half-assed attempt. If you guys want to close me, you should sell me. All right. All right, start again. Okay. Hi. This is Ron from the Daily News. How are you doing this morning? Shitty, what do you want? It's not what I want, sir. It's what you want. Ron, now we're talking. All right, what are you selling me? I'm offering you a subscription to daily news at a substantially reduced price. We're trying to reach out to people that have never had home delivery before. Right, so basically you're saying that everybody else who already has a subscription is getting on this one? Yeah, I, I guess so. All right, well, I can handle that. So tell me, why should I buy your paper? I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, why shouldn't I get the Times or The Voice, you know? Well, The Village Voice is free, sir, so if you want it, you should certainly pick it up. But The Daily News offers you something no other paper can real taste of New York. We have the best features, more photographs than any other daily in New York, and we have the most reliable delivery in the city. Now, what do you think? You know what I think, Ron? I think that was a sales call. Good job, buddy. So you're going to buy a subscription? No, I already get the time. <laughs> I've always loved that line, but most people will watch that and chuckle like I did, right? I watch that, and I look at the pieces, right? All of the dynamics. So you had you know, Ron, whatever his name is, like calling him and doing the, hey, da, da, da. And how often do we do that walking into an opportunity, whether it's a cold call over the phone or in person, right? He didn't have the confidence. He didn't really have something locked down. Now, obviously, this it's a movie. It's scripted. So he's able to pivot quickly. Hi, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. My name's, it's not about what you want, or it's not about what I want. It's about what you want. So in that statement there, he created a bridge with the character. Look for those opportunities to create a bridge and like, okay, that gets my attention. I don't hear that very often. The next thing he then did was he validated like, okay, yeah, you can get this. This is a great option. It's free. But this, 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 and this. He then started creating value. Now, at the end of the day, he didn't sell them because he was already getting the times and he didn't address that in it. But it still gets the idea that what you say and how you say it both matter. And I wanted to play that clip because it's incredibly relevant to what we do, right? So when you start your conversation on value, you should be able to get their attention and spark a, des a, a desire to know more in minutes, if not seconds, okay? Like when, when I went to that um, professional speaking boot camp, literally when you do your PTC and you do all of the different things, they are teaching you to create interest on every sentence. Every sentence you say should make the person want to hear what you say next. That is an art form. It is difficult. You don't have to quite get that ingrained, but this idea is the same, right? You need to come up with an interesting, attention-grabbing intro statement, right? Hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. And what did he say in that video? It's not what you, it's not what I'm interested in, it's what you're interested in. He had something that engaged them. Okay, now I wanna learn more, that is different. Every sentence should make the listener want to hear the next one. Like I said, you want to be building that up. So now the next sentence is this, and the next sentence is this. Great. What is he going to say next? What is she going to provide next? Deliver a powerful value add statement that connects with the potential client. Um, like one of the things, and I'm going to move this over. One of the things that I sit there and go is I, I literally say at times, and I vary it depending on how I read the room. You know, hi, my name is Keith Sampson, and I'm not here to sell you anything, right? In fact, I typically don't like salespeople. I train a lot of them, 
But the problem is most salespeople come in thinking whatever it is that they have to sell you is more important than whatever it is that you have going on during the day, and I can't stand that attitude. I'm here to help you. And in fact, I don't want to sell you anything. I want to provide you value, and I just want the opportunity to build a relationship with you to see if I can help your business grow and help you as an individual achieve more purpose through your business. Right? Like I, I'm running at a right speed. I'm not asking any questions there. I, I'm hitting them with it in the right tone. I'm hitting it with confidence. And now all of a sudden I have an opportunity to hopefully they want to hear a little bit more about how I do all of that. Can you pull in your why and your purpose? Like in my opening statement right there, I pulled in my why. I want to help your business grow. My, my, my why is to change the world through business. Now I didn't say those exact words, but I'm pulling that into that initial opening pitch, that elevator pitch conversation. And then you want to create, if possible, right? You want to create an emotional reaction. People will remember what you say this much, but they remember how they feel this much. Those are the moments that we want to create, not just in the opening pitch, but in through a presentation. Some, some other aspects to consider when you're building your elevator pitch. Again, don't mention saving money or anything price related. The minute you do that, you're actually probably going to turn them off. Okay. Then the minute you do that, you're putting yourself on the same plane as 80% of other quote salespeople out there that have that built into their elevator pitch. And you're not differentiating yourself. You want to address the opportunities, current demands, and timing. Okay, We know right now workforce shortages are an issue. Can that be developed? Can that be talked about in your opening pitch? Is that something you can assist with through bringing in technology? Right? Do you cold call or were they a warm lead? That's going to change the opening pitch. If it's a warm lead, I'm going to mention the person that said it. Hey, John over at John's Bar and Grill told me that I should come talk to you. He's been a happy customer for a while and he thought, I might be able to help you in the same way I've helped him. I'm not going to say that if I'm just cold calling, right? If, if they don't know John, if that, like that doesn't make sense. But if it was a warm lead, you better believe that changes my opening pitch, right? My elevator pitch. And then you want to question yourself if the pitch sets you and your potential client on a long-term direction you want. So when in other trainings that I've done, I've talked about when you walk in, the one call close is a very, very difficult thing to do. So, but most salespeople still operate their elevator pitch as if that's going to be the result. You need to change that to go from my short term result isn't a one call close, it should be a one call potential close for an appointment. I can't sell them anything until I have their attention. I don't, can't get their attention until I have an appointment because that allows me to present and present with value. So I'm not selling anything except for the opportunity to meet. I want to sell the appointment first. Long-term goal and was my elevator pitch reinforcing that, but with realistic next steps. If they are a referral, like I said, name drop that person who referred it to you. Now let's get into a presentation. The short In the short time that we have left here, I want to dive the next 25 minutes or so into the presentation piece. This is again, something I learned from this book. And I want to show like, like pictures of it in here because it's ridiculously simple when you see it, but it's so incredibly complex when you learn how to give it. And that's the genius behind it. And I also want you to understand any single one of you sitting on here can create this. It's not hard when you understand it. Okay. Don't think, Hey Keith, can you send me the presentation? Sure. I don't have one developed that I can send you, but I might work on developing one, but don't think for a second that, you know, again, that's kind of that job profession thing, right? If you're viewing this as a job, you're waiting for people to give you what you need to succeed. If you're, if you're looking at this entire career as a profession and a business, you're going to want to go out and build your own over the next two or three weeks of the holidays. So that way you're crushing your presentations at the beginning of the year. Three primary sections that your presentation needs to make it impacting. Because again, creating an emotional reaction is a skill. The first section is fact. This is where your confidence comes into play. It's fact. When you do this with confidence, we provide X, I do Y, I am this. That is fact, that is confidence. And then I'm gonna jump to the third one. Every fact should be backed up with proof. Otherwise it's BS. 
Okay, if all it is is fact, fact, I'm great, I'm this, da, 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 I can do this, 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 and this, and you have no proof, you have no validation for what it is that you're showing or telling, then it's just a bunch of this. And trust me, people hear plenty of this from salespeople. The, the middle section, and this is all about the, the opportunity, right? When we did the communicating for a change and we did the me, why, you part, right? This is the we, right? This is me discovering. It's the discovery section. This is all about the potential client. This is learning what they want, what they like, what they don't like. A proper presentation is not all about you or what you can do. It is about the merchant and what they need and discovering and pulling out potential pain points they may not even know about. That can be built in to your presentation and I'm gonna show you how. Keys to a great presentation. Like I said, there's three main areas, but you need to understand something. If you go, Keith, I've never had a presentation. I'm not gonna build a presentation. Okay, you don't need to watch the rest of this. But I challenge you, if you've had success without a visual presentation, then you absolutely need to watch this because people remember 20% of what they see. They remember roughly 70% of what, I'm sorry, 20% of what they hear. They remember up to 70% of what they hear and see. So the visual presentation reinforces what they're verbally hearing. And people remember 90% of what they engage in on top of the see and hear. So if you can build a presentation that isn't just reinforcing what you're verbally saying, but actually drives conversation and engagement, you are going to be so far ahead of the curve, it's not even funny. Keep it simple though, right? The keys to building a great presentation is not to have a bunch of wording and dialogue. When I start showing you some of the pages of this book, I have one sitting there right there and I'm gonna take you through those six key features in a second, the way they apply to our industry. Pictures and words. You don't leave the presentation behind and they don't need you because they can just read it. Number one, nobody's gonna do that. Number two, you don't wanna devalue yourself. You want simple, bold words and pictures to reinforce what you're verbally saying. It needs to be professional with branding on every single page because what each page alone can do turns into an individual leave behind flyer. So when not only did we have this book in a professional, you can see it's beat up, it's a little bit dirty. This one actually has a little fold over uh, uh, binder aspect, right? I think I got it in upside down, but you can prop it up, right? So you not only can prop this one up and it was nice laminated tab pages, but we had every single one of those printed. And so when we did a presentation, the printed versions of them as individual sheets of paper went into a nice professional folder and that's what we left behind. And I could pull in and out the proper pages I need that was relevant to that merchant, right? Or to that opportunity. So uh, I would do, and there's a little uh, wording in there that I did not remove. So I'll have to do that before I clean it up. Um, so, you know, professional with branding on every page. Another key to a great presentation is that it, you can personalize it to yourself, right? Even though all of us salespeople had this, we were allowed to use our own personalities when giving it. It didn't change the message, didn't change the way that we trained on the impact and we trained on it, right? We had to give it, we had to work on it, we had to refine it, we became skilled at this book at giving presentations. But I gave it different than Casey or Jeff or Joe or Caleb or Mark or the countless other salespeople that I helped train or work with during my time there. So I want, you know, you see that page right there out of the book, I'm gonna give you this page as if I were to use this same presentation to go out and sell what I actually sell. And it sounded something very similar. I literally developed it the exact same way we did it at Wildman. And it simply is, look, you know, I want you to think about when you're developing your presentation, this opening page, what is it you're really providing? Are you providing payment processing? Are you providing uh, cheaper rates, whatever? No. Okay, that's not gonna get you the business. Just like back then, we weren't providing cheaper uniforms. Yes, we did something, we provided uniform service, but that's not really what we did. And at Wildman, I kind of I have a, apply the same approach to what I do uh, for my company and my clients, right? We were a marketing company that happened to be in the uniform business. You should be a marketing company that happens to be in the payment space. Because when you move from providing payments to providing more, 
you are providing value, right? And that's what this is all about. So let me pretend to give this to you as a potential merchant. I have won the opportunity to sit down with you for a few minutes to explain how I can potentially help. And now we've broken the bread. We've had a little conversation. Hey, blah, blah, blah. Look, Mr. Ms. Potential Customer, I know as crazy as this may sound, I'm not here, here to provide you payment processing. Yes, that is part of what I do. But I provide these six key features, the first of which being image. I know you might be thinking, how does payments have to do with anything with image? Well, let me ask you this. A significant piece of your customer experience is when they pay you, is it not? That matters. The experience they have when they make that transaction impacts your image and your brand. I'm here to help enhance your image. You already have a great one. You have a great store, great logo, great thing. Why not make your payment experience equally as great as the image that you've built for your business. Our second point, our second key feature, professionalism. Look, I'm a professional. I'm an expert in this space, just like you're an expert in what it is you do, okay? You need to be handled with professionalism. I will be available from my time meeting with you to how the phones are answered to how I follow up will all be done in a professional manner. My third key feature, quality. You will absolutely receive quality service starting with me. I will back that up by only providing quality products and quality partnerships to make sure that every single thing that is done is done to help reinforce that first one, that payment experience, building your brand and building your image. Now, my fourth key feature is consistency. If I can do those things, but it becomes, oh, sometimes it's done here, but not so great here, where's the value in that? We have to deliver that quality service, product, professionalism, and that brand awareness in a consistent manner. And then finally, promptness. Look, availability is one of the biggest things that sets me apart from other body, anybody else. I know that when with, I'm working with my customers, it's pretty much 24 seven, whether it's by text or email, I have to take care of your needs promptly. Otherwise, I opened up the door to be replaced. A big piece of the value I bring to the table through my relationships, not vendorships, but through my relationships is being available and being prompt. Now, these five key features create the final key feature, value. That's what I provide. When I build relationships and I partner with my customers, we build a partnership based on value. Now, would you agree that these five key features would create value for you? If you had to pick one of these five key features as the most important one or the one you'd like to see the most improved upon, which one would it be? And then you sit back and listen, right? Now all of a sudden that I, I've taken it from a very confident fact piece to a discovery piece. And if they say quality, well, why is that? And you start exploring their problems. And next thing you know, they're gonna start dumping on all of the things they don't like. And you're making notes. I encourage you, have a note. Just don't sit back and listen, write. The importance of sitting there, uh-huh. Uh huh. means you are connecting, you are listening, and what they are saying matters. I have closed accounts without even going beyond this page. But the part of the presentation, as you see here, I'm gonna try to hold this up. I know I'm a little screen. Actually, let's try to do this real quick. I'm going to stop sharing. So that way, this is a little bit bigger. I wanna show you this before I go into the other supporting content, so I'll re-click back on sharing the screen. This was my book. I have made, I gave this presentation for a, 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 over 11 years, and I made lots of money. I sold lots of accounts, and I made the company millions and millions of dollars myself through this book, this simple book. Because we move from selling uniforms and linens to providing those six key features and then some, right? There, look, right there. There's those six key features. And then it was many years ago, a family-owned business started, a family started a business. But then right here, right, that discovery, we had market research pages. This is our questionnaire. How would you grade this, this, and this? Now, granted, payment processing isn't quite as complex as a, a route driver showing up every week with 30 people wearing uniforms, each of them a different shirt and pant every day. You have a lot of opportunity for improvement there, okay? But you can create the same thing. How would you grade your responsiveness to your current rep? How would you grade the, the ability to read the statements? How would you grade your online portal to, to be able to see transactions and batches? Oh, I don't have one. Okay, so you would grade that as poor? Yes, I would. This allows you to start establishing the fact that your potential merchant, they might think they have a great deal and they may think they have good value. All of a sudden they're, pa well, you actually graded this fair, fair, poor, poor, because they're not even giving you that. 
And now all of a sudden what you've done without bad mouthing anybody, you've actually painted a proper perspective of what they are currently getting. So you got the research, right? And we had different ones are based on different markets. And then we knew what the problem areas were in the industry. Cleanliness, repair accuracy, final repair checks. We barcoded, we had technology in uniforms back then. Yes, it actually exists with RFIDs now and everything, right? We barcoded the garments. We were the only company doing it. So we had technology that separated us. Every single piece in here reinforced value. And then one of the things that we did and what I would do if I was not an NAB employee and was running my business, I would be doing this exact same thing. I just frankly don't have the time, right? Is we did customer visitations with scorecards. Once, depending from the size of the account, one time to three times a year, every single customer scored us on key fundamental things. And that allowed us the proof, right? I don't have one in here, but we had the survey results. And I stacked my book full of the survey results over and over and over again, quarter after quarter, 98% satisfied or higher, 99% satisfied or higher. That was the proof. I could say all of this stuff, but by providing the proof from actual customers, and then we backed that up with a customer guarantee and then a family guarantee statement. This was simple. And as you see in the pages, it's not like you need some kind of crazy graphic design program knowledge expense to build it yourself. So let me reshare my screen again so that way you can see what I have up here. And I want to show you the next page, right? The uh, What you need to have as supporting content in your presentation. So again, think about this stuff as you're going forward. When you have downtime, can you be developing these things? I put a questionnaire, slides on value adds, slides customized with some specific technology to the industry. You don't have to be is specific, right? You don't have to show, like my literature, I show no specific logos, brands of any other third-party resource. I just show images because I want to communicate the technology I can provide. The ability to defend, you want to be able to pull out the pain points. Oh, I don't have that. I don't have that. Now all of a sudden through the presentation, you're, you're creating the desire to want more and go, this is all available. I didn't even realize that I could have this right? You're creating perceived value. You have the survey results. I would definitely recommend you guys should be doing that as a fundamental piece of your thing because think about it. Well, Keith, I don't have time to survey my customers. Look, I literally don't because 50 hours a week doing this for you all, okay? But if I wasn't, that is as important as selling an account because it will give me the ammunition. I am literally building. I'm one, cleaning up my, my, my portfolio and reinforcing I'm not losing any accounts out the back door. Okay, super important. We're gonna have a whole training on that in 2022. But I'm not losing accounts at the back door, but more importantly, I'm actually creating an asset that will help me sell more accounts. So you better believe those survey results are ridiculously important. And then, you know, your business values, a list of values that are with processing. I'm gonna show you some of those things in a little bit. A customer guarantee. If you wanna build a customer guarantee, because you know you can write these merchants without any uh, an, uh, early termination fee. So what about backing it up yourself? Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? Right? I am. My customers know that I stand behind every single thing that I do. Reference statements. If you can get verbal reference statements with pictures of the merchant, like their, their, their picture, as well as a picture of their business, and you're putting that in your presentation book, again, proof, fact, proof, fact, proof. Every single thing you say you should do, you should have the proof to back it up so it isn't just wording. There's also a place for throwaway presentations. And I want to address this before I get into some examples of some of the value adds and content you need to have in there. Because you're going to go, Keith, what about the throwaway presentations? This was not a throwaway presentation. Okay. When I've talked about throwaway presentations, this is what I would do. I would, if I created this, I would create it in a way that I can customize it for a potential merchant that I knew that I was going into, right? We didn't have the technology back in 2000, 2001 that we have today. They weren't giving us computers, iPads, and everything else. We were old school. If you're doing this digitally, yes, you can create and customize those PDFs and drop images of that business, pictures of the inside of their building, all of those different things. I couldn't even imagine the presentations and my closing rates, what they would have been today versus back then by me being able to do throwaway presentations. A throwaway presentation shows them you have done your homework. You are setting yourself apart from every other competition. Now, if you do a booked presentation like this, a canned presentation, then you have the opportunity to do a throwaway one after the initial. So if you do an initial presentation, you gather information, I'm going to put together a proposal, you might do some demos, and I'm going to come back 
with some stuff for you. That's when I build the throwaway presentation. I've got pricing. I've got their information. I have all of their pain points listed. I have everything going through and that will allow me to close it because then I have addressed any objections. If they come out with another one, well, I need to check with this person. Well, let's give them a call because I'm doing this, 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 and this for you, right? I'm laying it out there. So when you do the th throwaway presentations, it might be more along the proposal side. But here are some examples of reinforcing content you might have in a presentation, right? You know an objection, oh, I don't know if I really want to give us my statement. Can't I just tell you what I'm paying? Look, here's why I need your statement. Flip the book, proof, right? I factually said with confidence that I need your statement to be able to actually give you a real proposal. Here's the proof of why. Visual reinforcement for what I'm saying. It is like a puzzle. You can tell me what you're doing, but that doesn't help me understand your card makeup profile. I have no idea how many rewards cards versus debit cards. I have no, like there's so many pieces of the puzzle that I don't know unless I see the full statement. The full statement will allow me to do it properly. You want to bring in even opportunities for education, right? You might have a slide that talks about effective rate. Say, look, I'm going to teach you how to manage your account by effective rate so that way you never have to worry about whether or not you have fair pricing, right? I'm not talking about saving money. I'm talking about under them understanding and having the confidence of understanding how to manage their account by effective rate. Because the byproduct of that too is, they're not looking through 15 pages of a statement. I will teach them right here, section page five or six. You take this number, you divide it by this number, you get this number. That's your effective rate. Here, you have other aspects. Payments hub, this. You wanna remove that from this number because those are additional services. I can teach people how to do that. And then I would probably have a, a, a blanket page of additional processing value adds, right? Benefits for the merchant and benefits for the consumer. Now, benefits for the consumer, I might bring out some of those as individual pages, depending on the technology that that merchant needs or what I'm focusing on as part of my vertical growth, like what I'm trying to do to accomplish my goals, right? So benefits to the merchants. Obviously, you want to list things like Payments Hub, uh, Faster Funding Times, American Express Full Acquire, all of these benefits that are the bullets Right? If you're going out, you're going to war to win business. Right, You want to be as loaded up as you possibly can. That means you've got to be ready to outgun, outman, outthink, outmaneuver every single competition person out there. That means every single thing that you could possibly line up as a value add becomes an opportunity to distance yourself from the competition. And then your own values. So I have these on my website. These are actually my business values and principles that I put on my website. And I would absolutely have these in my presentation because this is me, right? This is a core me, building partnerships, not vendorships, inspiring businesses through passion and positivity, employ and develop our superpowers, giving without expectations, provide an incredible customer experience, deliver value in all aspects at every opportunity, making ourselves accessible with empathy, encouraging a growth mindset, be unapologetically authentic, and I want to build a fan base, not a customer base, build proactive processes, and be a leader through influence. Not an influencer. A leader through influence. I want my potential customers to know, this is me. This is my integrity. This is what they will get in a business relationship partnership with me. Now, there's a big reason why I would put this in there, and I may not go through all of it because later on, if they're reading this and they're looking at their current provider or they're looking at the people they might be meeting with as well, including some solutions out there that we uh, don't like to compete with, and they're not going to get this with them, I'm bettering my chances. When I train sales reps, including back when I trained sales reps on this presentation, I trade them with the mindset, you do not care about your competition. Okay. Don't, I'm saying like, don't let it be a distraction, right? You're aware, you are educated, but I do not care who the competition is because they do not change who I am and what I am bringing to the table, right? If I'm the first one in, and this happened all the time in bid opportunities, right? They'd have three or four companies they'd have to meet with. If I'm the first one in, I am setting the bar that they are comparing everybody else to. If I'm the last one in, I am blowing every single one of them out of the water. That's what I did to expect to win business every single day. I built every single piece of my presentation around that mentality. The details, the small amounts, the little things, they add up. They create value in you. 
If you doubt any of that or you want more information, watch my sell on price, lose on price, don't be a loser because I talk about the five P's that make up value that you can deliver on. This is what will make an incredible presentation. This will allow you to develop an opening pitch as well as a presentation that will help you sell on value. You think somebody goes through everything that we just went through and they're currently at 25 basis points and eight cents and all of a sudden they're going, well, I'm at 25 basis points and eight cents, but I don't have this, this, and this. How much will it cost for that? Well, I, I can do everything that, you know, I can match it. I can, you know, be at 35 and, and eight. You know, I'm going to be a little bit more because you have really good pricing, but to do what I can do, I'm going to have to charge a little bit more for that. But if they're getting more value, then that, that's okay. If the solution that you're bringing them, it, this is what I want you to learn. Because I want you to learn how not to sit there and go into a 25 and 8 basis point merchant and think you have to walk in there and be at 15 and 5 to get the business. That doesn't do you or anybody else any favors to build your business, to build your portfolio for maximum potential. Before I go into any questions on this, three takeaway action items to create more value and opportunity to close on value, right? Use those six key features. You're getting this deck, like I said, right? You're going to see those six key features. Once again, they are the exact same ones that I use for 11 and a half years in a completely different industry. If I was selling landscaping tomorrow and building a presentation for a landscaping company, those would be the six key features I would train all of their salespeople to sell on. Use them when you build it out in your presentation. Create an opening pitch that does not start with a conversation based on price. Craft it, work it, massage it. It is an art piece. And think of it, it is an art piece that could be the make it or break it deal between you being at six figures next year or not. Don't you think that, that, that it requires and deserves the attention that you should give it? The wording, the crafting, the practice. I don't care if it takes hours of you standing in a mirror to be able to sit there and craft that presentation, that opening sales pitch to get the presentation the way that I gave you my quick one right into the camera. And then the third takeaway, create the content for your presentation, solutions, your values, et cetera. Send them to me, right? If you want somebody to proof them, I don't have the time to do this for hundreds of people that are watching this, okay? I don't. Wish I did, but I don't. If you want to create them, heck, you want to create them and you want to give and you want to, and you want to shoot a five to 10 minute video of you giving your presentation, I'll watch it. I'll give you pr uh, productive feedback. I want to bring you value in that way, right? I know that these are the things that I can do to help you achieve your maximum potential, especially in this. I know that this is an area where I am an expert in, and I say that not egotistically or arrogantly, but confidently because I've been doing it for 21 years and I was taught by one of the best, okay? This is this book is not mine. Like I said at the beginning, I mastered it and then I added to it. If I go get the other book that has the other pages of stuff that I created and put in there and it made it more efficient, it's thicker, right? Because I added even more, some of the stuff I shared with you. But I learned from the best. This system and this process works. Thank you for, for just engaging with me for this last session of the day.